Onsets in Bitwig Studio are basically a system for pointing out where the transients are in a given sound recording. I'll show you how this works and why this is interesting. Here's a recording of some drums. I'm going to drop this in the launcher, and you can see already that it's analyzed it. It's figured out that we're at 103 beats a minute. It's chosen the time stretching mode called stretch. I'm going to change it to stretch HD because I think that sounds better. And it's got this preserve onset switch already switched on. If we go edit the clip itself, we have these little expression editors down here in the lower left. If we choose onsets, we zoom in a little bit, we can see that Bitwig has already started dropping these little lines all over the place. And what these are is transient markers. They call them onsets, but that's what they are. Every time there's a drum hit, you get a nice big change in sound. That's a transient. And so it, it wasn't too hard for it to figure out where these positions all go. But if you don't like one of them, like this one I think is a little early, you can just change it. You can overwrite it yourself. And you can create your own. You can you know double click and put one in or double click and delete it. And what they do is when you're time stretching, it sounds pretty normal when you're 103 to 110. That's pretty close to the original speed. But if I make this a lot slower, it still sounds pretty good, even though it's a pretty extreme stretch. Let's go even further. Let's go like 60. 61. You can hear that the stretching artifacts are starting to become pretty pronounced, but the actual hits are surprisingly not bad. Here's what happens if we turn off that preserve onset switch. This means it's going to ignore your onsets, it's not going to try to preserve their integrity, it's just going to stretch the whole thing. Listen for the kick drum and the snare drum as they'll start to separate. Hear how that's a little bit more washy? I'll do it again. I'll turn it back on and everything sounds cleaner. It's still not perfect because it is an extreme time stretch and that's only ever going to sound so good. But you can use these to preserve those bits of sound across these wild stretches and get a surprisingly good result. Alternately, you could put them in random locations on all kinds of different recordings and make a terrible result and resample that and get creative with it, you know, use it for sound design. But that's mainly what they're used for is this, this correction here. If you're warping a track like you would in live, normally you'd go through and, you know, you create your marker and then you create the markers on either side and then you drag it around left and right to stretch however you want so you don't mess the whole thing up. I'm going to undo those. If you have the onsets programmed, you can hold the Alt key, choose one of these, and it'll automatically make uh, markers on the other onsets, so you can just move the one drum hit around in time without affecting the ones next to it. It's not a you know earth-shaking feature, but it is a nice convenience, and it's good to know about. Finally, if you are looking at onsets, and you choose the audio event here contained within the audio clip, because those are separate, there's this button here called Split at Onsets. What that does is it breaks the whole thing up into slices. And the slices are still inside the clip. So you can take them, copy them, rearrange them. Let's add this one here. Let's add this one over here. Right from within the launcher. You don't have to move to the timeline, which is really nice, and I really like it. Here's how this sounds. So you can chop up your breaks, you can make all kinds of interesting sounds using that. And that's the basics of onsets. There's not much to it. I hope this was helpful. Take care and happy chopping.